All right. So what we're going to do here, we have got our device inside Intune. <clears throat> As you can see it's managed over here. Uh, it's defaulted to corporate device ownership because we AAD joined it. <clears throat> now, out in the real world, uh, if you're allowing users to join their personal devices, uh, you would just periodically check what you've got and update here. Uh, you can usually check. <clears throat> you know, you come down and you go to uh, devices, and if someone's enrolled a device, it will show here. Yeah, okay, and you can. You can't do this if it's personal. You can if it is corporate. That, as a personal one, will always be available. So, when someone leaves the company, you hit that remove company data. And then everything in their OneDrive just disappears. Uh, anything basically to do with the company disappears from their device next time it syncs. And then you can remove it later, like from the devices. Uh, right. So what we need to do uh, right we need we need to come over to tenant administration uh, and under roles <clears throat> We want to bring up the scope tags. Uh, we want to create Let's do a scope tag. You can name it whatever you want. <clears throat> Give it something meaningful so that if you know. If you're in a working environment, someone can look at it and go, oh, that's what this does, and give it a little description. All right. So groups, we haven't got a group yet. Oh yeah, we do. So we on create Windows devices. Now we can go back and change the name of that group. Right, so this is just a group that I made, another dynamic one. We want to put this, if you've got the on-prem server, totally optional to have group right back. I like to have it there just so you can yeah, there's another place you can keep track of your devices. All right now, the dynamic membership rule. 
I have OS type contains Windows and the device category equals AAD PC. So if we go over to the validate, <clears throat> right? You'll see there's like another device here. Uh, that happens after you enable phone sign in and then configure your device for phone signing. All right. So essentially these are the these two are the same device. But we're going to find all of these devices fail to meet the dynamic rule to fall into that group. Uh, that's because we need a device category uh, uh, customization. Yeah, we need the device category. Okay, device category. So device category, uh, we can have, we need, we really should have one for our Android devices too. So uh, Web tags, we will put Android web profile apps. Uh, we really should have a different one for this. So I'm just going to go make that now real quick. Uh, go back to previous. Uh, Groups. We should have that one. Okay, we want Okay, and then remove the default if you want to create, uh, create device category. So we can split this even further by having um, you know, Windows PC, Windows Laptop. So you can apply different policies depending on the type. So you do all your broad stuff <clears throat> within devices and do all your uh, fine tuning with specific policies and such. Um, right, so now we have, we have our profiles and our scope tags and our categories. 
come over. Uh, Properties, device category, Windows device, corporate, set scope tag, remove the default, save. All right, this is just the management name. Um, <clears throat> not sure if you can. Yeah, apparently you can change that. All right. Now, say this was a corporate device and yeah, it's assigned to someone. You can reassign it to someone else. You can fully remove it if you want to. Uh, you can set it up. You can set it up so, yeah, you've got your notes so you can say, and this is the CEO's PC, whatever. But yeah, now when we revalidate, right, so that still fails. Ah, uh, because, uh, let's see. Where's the categories? Windows device portrait. validate and now it will pass and you can add different properties as well say so if it was a hybrid uh, device you'd be able to go by OU a management type uh, Management type, I'm pretty sure you just put Intune with that. No. Um, yeah, there you go. And management type, MDM. Now, not sure, yeah. So you can have that equals as well. <clears throat> so that, um, yeah, it's harder to spoof the OS type. Uh, okay, we should find, yeah, that fact updated instantly. Well, so Microsoft is onto it now. They finally sorted that one out. Uh, so what we've got here, and we can see device type enrollment restriction has succeeded. That's just a default profile type. Right. We can check for compliance. Now there's an error on the compliance. So by clicking on that, you can view uh, your compliance policies. So it's compliant because enrolled user exists. Device is active. It's checked in in the last 30 days. All right. And we get the error because there's no compliance policy assigned. So how we get to that, we come back out to compliance policies, create one, Windows 10 and later, 
doesn't give you much choice. You've only got that. So let's say Windows and see. And it pays to just separate with corporate and personal. So you don't want to blanket all of it because you'll get so many errors with personal devices. There's only so much control that you can take over someone's personal device. Uh, you either let them use them or you don't. Custom compliance. They must be compliant in according in accordance to the rules of these files. Now, I'm not going to go into that here. All right. <clears throat> now, code integrity. You basically want and secure boot, you pretty much want as well. Minimum OS version, change uh, of minor build revision. If we go back here, we can see that version. Setting filters up. Probably, no, we haven't tried to get any. This will populate over time. Right, the recovery things. Because I don't have BitLocker enabled, that will always be empty. But, um, if you do enable BitLocker on your device and you wind up locking yourself out, this is where you recover it. Okay, no local admin passwords found. So this you need to install open source software called Laps. Amazing piece of software because you'll always get that one person who is super difficult and um, you know they know they know enough to stop you from being able to remotely access their PC like They'll, they'll see the service running down in the sys tray and close it or you know they'll, they'll find one way and you'll just not be able to access their machine remotely and they'll need something and you'll have to give them an admin password and rather than go change it later as you might forget this will just periodically change it nice comfy compliance ah there we go operating system version right so 
this one. That's like the latest current version. So I don't want I you're gonna every time this updates, if you want to I mean you can be a bit lax um and just say come on you you've got to at least be updated to this point or you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna come and kick your ass uh, right now this the um configuration manager right so that's if you're using a third party enrollment we are not in this point because that's just awful but uh, system security so this, this also covers windows mobile so i mean we can have that as not configured because we are not we're not setting um th this is a pc compliance policy not yeah okay I actually didn't even worry too much about that either. Um, Microsoft Defender. Right, so require the device to be at or under the machine risk store. Uh, store. <laughs> yeah. Lows okay. Medium. Medium is like high is just insane. You can't do much. You may find your own configuration gets flagged under medium, in which case you would want to put it at low if you are confident that you have actually mitigated that risk. Otherwise, check your machine out see why the hell it's failing and um yeah you, know, you can send an email to them you can add it to the automatic retirement list just be careful when you do that because it is a pain to bring them back once they've been retired so I generally just have it okay. mark non-compliant and immediately all zero just means that it's going to completely go now the message template uh, so you've got to select a message template we haven't got any you've got to make a message template you could use this so you tell it to um, you, know, you can send it to a specific mailing list not necessary they stick out like you know <laughs> you, you can find them quite easily now the scope tags uh, right. so this is for a corporate one so we'll apply that corporate scope tag groups again we place it on there All right filter mode do not apply a filter yeah just say if you've got certain devices that are in there 
that you know that they're gonna fail, but you're cool with them. You can filter them out. And yeah, that's basically it. So in order to reach compliance, we just need to have Windows 10 and later, secure boot, code integrity, and a minimum version of this and reach medium or lower risk score and it applies to these devices All right and then uh, it's currently not assigned it should be assigned And have assigned it to a group. There we go. There we go. Cool. So <clears throat> that notification that came up, just be aware. <clears throat> things are going to change and they're going to be in different locations but the same basic rule and train of thought applies for all of it all right cool so we haven't um it, it hasn't applied yet We have, right, we come down to here and tell it to sync. Yeah, so the last check in time was before we finished that policy. Now, <laughs> Try to avoid these two, or these three, if you can. Uh, this is Windows Defender. So that's, uh, let's see, get all admin centers and the security. Here we go. 365 Defender. Now, this is a much more improved version than the default one that comes with uh, Windows. Yeah. <laughs> this is very rare that you will actually see this in a corporate environment. Because what happens in corporate environments is people insist that they need hardware that they don't even sign into. They don't even turn on. And it will just sit away. You know, oh, I need an iPhone for work. And then that thing gets turned off for months at a time. And when it becomes non compliant, and they don't work because they are non compliant, so they can't connect to the company stuff properly. I mean, in this current configuration, non compliance means nothing because we haven't configured it to lock things out if they're non-compliant um, always as a rule of thumb have one device that is allowed to access even if it is non-compliant because if for whatever reason it goes non-compliant you can't even use your admin powers to get back in at least not from that device.
um, this is our default secure store. All right. Uh, I'll go over the uh, security and compliance secure store upgrade stage. Uh, right. <laughs> Fishing simulator. This is a good one. Because you can uh, send out a fishing simulator and see if people are dumb enough to click on it. And then those that are dumb enough to click on it, you then round them up and make them do training. And then, you know, give it two weeks, hit them with another one, and round them all up, because you can guarantee they're just going to be like, oh, whatever. We make them do training, make them do more training until they get it right. Because then, you know, when the real thing comes, they're going to look at it and go, ah, oh, I'm not doing more of that training. <laughs> so, you know, you can deter them by making them sit through boring security seminars. And you deliberately make them as boring as possible. Right. Let's turn on 365 Defender. Right. So <clears throat> this is all going like it's being created now so we can't do a whole lot with it right now uh, so we've got it deployed right yeah that's all starting to get deployed Now, what we want to do, now that we've got our compliance policy, there we go. So the default, <coughs> the default device compliance policy has now passed because we have a compliance policy assigned. Now, why did this fail? secure boot well appears that my pc and it makes sense that i've turned secure boot off because i dual boot with another os and i forgot that i didn't um generate the EFI keys I need for secure boot so I can either go fix that uh, uh, by enabling secure boot and having those compliance uh, ha having those EFI keys in my other OS or I can take the easy road and um, uh, where was it? it was that one <laughs> take the easy road and do that I'm just going to do that for now Right. Uh, that's the easy way out for the time being. Uh, 
because that will eventually disappear. Right. Okay, cool. So I'll window with that up. Right. Now, things of Windows apps. Right. we can do here now that we've got um, we will want another group Searching groups, not making a new group. Right, so Windows device apps. Um, now, hit that one, assign an owner. Right, and Device OS type equals Windows and management type equals VM. Right, uh, let's just validate our rule. So you don't want apps unavailable to the devices you want. But you also don't want them available, the ones that are incompatible. So go back, create, and for that, we will need, uh, so you get it from the Microsoft Store, and you get the company portal app. That's done, open. Now this should automatically sign you in because we're Azure AD join. Right? Now, <clears throat> this one is a little bit redundant because it's already picked a device. But we can show all. Yeah, and this is cool because uh, this way you can put mandatory apps, you know, like, um, I can't have got Outlook installed on here or anything like that. No Office Suite at the moment. But, yeah, cool. Right, so, uh, we need that to be able to show the apps in here, basically. So what we do we need to So we need an app protection policy. Windows information protection. So that's, yeah. We just need a policy there. So we just do that. Um, we haven't actually got any apps installed yet. So we can't target any for the time being. 
uh, some Windows information protection. You can learn more about it by clicking on that link. All right, we go through basically as the name suggests. It stops the information in the app from being allowed. So you can block and allow overrides. You can just make it quiet. I like to just make it quiet. Uh, so This will, this is where, so you can set what network you want everything to be available on. And if they're outside that network, then they can't, um, if they're outside that network, then they can't. Uh, go through they, they can't access the data within these specific apps that you specify unless they meet certain criteria such as being on a VPN um, this one is actually a pretty in-depth lesson so we're not going to cover that here uh, so what we are going to do here I'm just going to Uh, there's a few different types, so you can Microsoft three six five apps. Yeah, I mean, we can do this. Right, we can deploy this. If you say show as featured app, it's going to show in here. Um, we're making this a mandatory install. So it's not going to be featured because there's no point. Like, yeah, these devices don't have any. Um, Yeah, so we're going to install all of this stuff. Default file format. And just go open, open XML format, update channel. <coughs> right, so this is how often the updates will come through. So the current channel, which is always in a preview mode, that's every time an update comes out for the public. And then, so every second Tuesday, every Tuesday, whenever they release an update, this one will be once a month. This one, as it suggests, and then this one is, yeah, the preview channel of 
the semi annual. So every six months, the office apps will get an update. Um, has its good and its bad points. So you only have to deal with people complaining about changes twice a year. But if you go into something like that, like this one, you'll get more changes more frequently, but you, they're, they're smaller changes, it's not so drastic, so it's only when they accidentally push out code that breaks something, and it's usually something so obscure, and there's always one person out there that uses this strange method of doing whatever it is they do. But uh, for myself, I don't mind. I need to keep current with all the changes. So, uh, and then remove other versions, version to install latest. You can go specific and tell it to pick one of these, but I want the latest. Now, use shared computer activation. Right, so um, this allows it, right, so if this were a hot desk in PC, I would say yes, because you can sign your account in on five separate devices and then activate these 365 devices uh, software on five devices. And if you go over that limit, it's going to stop working properly. When it's not managed via Intune, you don't get this option. This one's a great option if people, uh, if your work environment is a hot desk environment. Uh, and then you can tell it to just automatically accept still in the background um, right, so search in Bing. I'm going to tell that one no, because I don't want, I, I don't want MS search on my machines at all. Now languages, <laughs> make sure you pick our language, otherwise it won't install. Scope tags. Right. <clears throat> and group we want Windows device apps. We can't comply yet. <laughs> Only secure thing. Okay. I am starting to get quite tired if you couldn't tell. But, um, I'm going to have to go back and check that compliance policy while that's applying. All right, what did I do to it? Yeah, I did, did set that as not configured. Right, cool. So that's not going to show you in the company portal, but we'll see. Alright. Um, 
and inching can take a little bit to become like to update. So we'll move on to the config profiles. Now you can either use templates or a settings catalog. I like the uh, so if we go templates, you can go see endpoint protection again you would just make this a corporate policy okay. and then yeah you can enable it Um, <laughs> that is just, oh, oh geez. yeah, you can really annoy some people turning that off. Uh, external enterprise sites, so block content from unapproved websites. That's going to create a lot of work for you, a lot of repetitive, boring work. Right. Collect logs. So, yeah, always, always want your logs. You've always got to have that so you can see what the hell they were using. Enable that and enable download. Right, so you firewall, allow FTP, PSK encoding, leave it as not configured, then it can just work. Don't really need a lot of that. Make a few more be handy. We're not. <laughs> we don't really need it. Uh, defend a firewall enabled. So I'm currently don't think I'm on a domain network. But, um, stealth mode. Yeah, you want it stealth mode, so it doesn't, like, inform them. Because then they'll just feel in it. Right, and then, um, public. So, uh, default for outbound connections. Let me just check my network profile. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, stupid stuff. Um, I don't know why they keep defaulting to public network. I'm on a private network. Right? I'm actually on a domain network. But they are becoming less and less. Now, these rules as well. Right. 
and then you can come in and add firewall rules here if you need them. requires an admin these are all the DNS that I use <laughs> so that's yeah we got two from home and then two Google ones for backup all right now smart screen uh, you can enable that. I would enable that for the mobile devices. Finger encryption methods. <laughs> so, yeah, you can set all this if necessary. Fixed drive recovery. I mean, I don't have BitLocker enabled. Uh, right. Tax surface reduction. So you can say, yep. That's your Windows Credential Manager. Uh, yep. So that's always exploitable. Let's see. Yeah. So that one's a double edged sword. You're going to block functionality by blocking it. And again, same with blocking macros. Uh, Would say block that one. So it's usually a sign that it's been compromised. You may come across one out of every hundred turns of that possibly being a legitimate cause. All right, and I'll block that as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's a no-brainer. Never run obfuscated code. Yeah. Don't let it execute a payload downloaded from the internet. This one, put that in order only, so you at least have a log because yeah, can I use these commands? All right, and <laughs> that's a no-brainer, block that. Skills don't need a prevalence, age, or trusted its criteria. Put them in order only. Put that in order only and advanced ransomware protection enable all right control folder access Let's see. yeah so Yeah, basically, I, I'm not going to configure it. You may or may not want to. Network protection, any low reputation IP or domain. It can block, like so. I haven't got a um, XML handy for that. 
at control go forward and we trust that to the good grip. I, I just don't want to block this one. Prevent your guard. This is a Microsoft Defender, the usual one that we know. So we're going to allow this sort of stuff uh, right here. That, I don't know if that even still applies, but um, good one to have on anyway. Uh, family options. So <clears throat> save that not completed. <clears throat> yep, put that on clear TPM button. And allow that and allow the tamper protection. <laughs> okay, we can display that. Now, Microsoft Accounts. This is referring to the personal accounts. Block. Promote logon without password. Block. Local admin account. Uh, that's the one. Um, that's the one called administrator. So guest account. I'm just going to call him. Um, yeah. I mean, you don't have to rename them. If they're blocked, then they're fine. So undock without okay. yeah. Format and eject movable media. <laughs> That so they can't yeah, destroy evidence. Uh, enable this. Just enable that. Let your users just add a damn printer. If you're not rolling it out, let them add the damn thing. Right, interactive logon. <laughs> Uh, right, so you can have display name, domain, and username. I last you signed in user, type username at sign in, login message title, login message text. So 
So, people who know what that is will use that method as opposed to that. Could always just put email address first, right? <laughs> right, so uh, I don't want to enable any of this or my stuff, right? virtual memory page file when shutting down that you would just put on like a video conference device UAC right only elevate executables that are signed and validated Virtualize file and registry write failures to per user locations. Right. So if they're screwing up, uh, you can virtualize that to the per user location. Um, not necessary. So we're going to leave it off. Get rid of that secure location. Okay, I'll have to get to learn more on that one one day. Right, so elevation prompt for admins. We can have that's done. We can have that prompt for credentials. So that yeah. <clears throat> on your own device, that's gonna just annoy the hell out of you. Um, I actually prefer this one because sometimes you'll be sitting there, you don't see that little thing down here you don't see where it went because you are looking at a different screen um, so at least that goes dark and all you can do is find this thing and click it you know when something is trying to elevate um, elevation prompt for standard users Prompt for credentials on the secure desktop. Uh, there are elevation prompts to use an interactive desktop. No elevator prompt for app installation. So that's every single app. Uh, the only. <clears throat> I'm going to leave it off. Admin approval mode. Yeah. Not like clients. I'm nearly done. Uh, server. Yeah, we don't need all that. Um, right, aim safe task. Right, so you can like disable all of that, <laughs> but I actually use it on mine, so I'm gonna leave it enabled. And then, yeah, so all of this stuff is stuff that you can allow, so allow local logger. 
Authenticated users are allowed to log on locally. Allow access from network. Again. Authenticated users. Let's see. Change the system time. This one I like to just allow authenticated users uh, right. um, they all if they know how to make a sim link they're not going to fuck it up so Remote shutdown would have that one. Yeah. Yeah. And network services. Store files and directories. That one. That one. That was a very long comfy. Uh, this is going on the thing. Next, assignments, add groups, uh, Windows devices, corporate, rule, sign profile if OS version uh, edition. Right, so you can 10.11 Pro. In mobile, I T four. I mean, I don't have any enterprise devices or education licensed devices. I sure as hell don't have home, but enable it anyway. And pro. All right, next, view and create, we are done. There is our first configuration profile. Now, you can bring these ADMX templates as well for group policy. But, uh, yeah, right, cool. Uh, for your update ring. Windows 10. So allow, allow. Quality update deferral period of seven days. Uh, yeah, and 14 for a feature. Now, this will bring all your Windows 10 devices up there. All right. Um, allow 60 pre-release builds. Yeah. 
don't do it. <laughs> uh, right. Auto install and restart. It can be a tricky one. Just auto install. Um, my active hours are actually closer to closer to about that. Restart checks allow. Um, I can trust me to actually install my Windows updates. Uh, yeah, so use the default and deadline settings. So this uh, feature. I just like these ones, and then you can give a three day grace period. And um, it's not nice to automatically reboot someone's device on them. <laughs> right, so we include our group. Create. Right, let's go back and have a look. Yes, yeah, see our compliance is updated. Uh, let's see, managed apps. Uh, yep, yeah. so there's a 365 app to Windows 10 and later has come in. Waiting for install status. Uh, let's see, Word. It's there it's automatically signed in and set up for me it's like downloaded the app signed me in and activated the license but honestly <laughs> what more could you want see outlook it'll just come through search for my account It will find it eventually. See, and there's like no app showing. Like, <clears throat> it just will not show there. Uh, okay. It didn't find my account. Yeah. I personally think that it sucks. Okay. Um, that's done. Oh, okay. So Microsoft Teams is not in there. All right, cool. I don't have any emails. So that won't take long, but that's created my profile for me. Uh, right, discovered apps. There is a lot. <laughs> Twice config. Yes. App config. That's all good. Sitting in okay. Yep. Well, this is actually easier. Well, category productivity, development, and design. To manage, so <clears throat> you just pick these 
categories and it will actually show up on those It, it will show up under those categories in the company portal. Now, before, we used to have to actually run them through another program and mess about. And I go select image. from an earlier lesson Okay, we can edit these later as well when we add more scope tags, assignments. Uh, so, requirement, we will have it as available for Windows device apps. And that's gone and created our package for us. I mean, this is great. You used to have to do all this manually and make weird Now, it's supposed to include teams for it, but it just is not. So, I'm going to go here.
Right, okay. It's not the wrong file. It's the house is done. It's just done yet. That's done. Should be able to see something showing. It is there, it's available. No. If it's not showing in there, it could be to do with the assignments. There's the lights, right. Windows device corporate, that's the scope. Right. Devices. Windows device corporate yeah. group membership. We are in Windows device apps. Windows device apps brings us to here. Right, so I need to go rectangle. Right, yes, I forgot to add that. All right, this will take a little while to update. Uh, what we can do. Sync. Right. Now. And another one. Right. So make sure you get the MSI. Category. Productivity, business, social, logo.
Get tags that may make it available. These two. All right, and I should start seeing them get populated in here. Uh, that can take a little while. Uh, so I'll wrap it up here, and that okay, like this, this can take hours to update. It usually, like usually when the first one comes through, the others are not. Um, so slow to come through. Much like our dynamic groups and such. When we get those other ones kind of sorted, I'll just tack that at the beginning of the next video. This is one very long lesson. I'm going to cut bits of it out to try and make it shorter for you. But there you go. That's Windows Intune set up, basically. Let's cover what we've done. I can't use that. But, yeah. So we've got our compliance policies. Let's just, let's go in Windows. Right. So we've covered we've covered enrollment before. We've got our compliance policy. We've got our config profile. <clears throat> we didn't do any these. We've got the update policy. Didn't, didn't really go into this one either. Um, these are your feature updates. I mean, I'm already on 22H2, so don't need to worry about that. Quality updates. These are all your yeah. So this is so you can basically the device is so far out of date. It's gonna force it to get up to date, and then only allow so you know you can you can force install. Uh, force reboot as well, and then yeah, you need driver update profiles. Okay, you can manually approve, automatically approve, make them available after three days. I find, find if you do seven, from the time it comes available, within seven days, if there's a driver update that's just no good, yeah. excuse me, if there's a driver update that's no good at seven days, Um, it should have been removed and replaced. Or at the very least, removed. But yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. You sign these policies the same way as you do everything else.
filters manage device Windows 10 emulator choose a property uh, Enrollment profile menu with device ownership equals corporate. There we go. And now we we, we populate our device filters. It's all the same way, basically. But then when you go to your device category, you can uh, so much there. The device cleanup rules. <laughs> so don't check in for so long, you may as well just get rid of them. Windows 365 provisioning, that's virtual machines. Let's see. Yeah, there isn't anything else that really needs to be covered here. Uh, I mean, the filter. I guess. Alright, so we've got the compliance settings. Assignments. Uh, so you could edit the filter. Say exclude filtered devices. So if you, or you know, include so you can make sure that you get the right device but it's a, also a way you know it's also a way you can get uh, add a group uh, I'm not sure it's a way that you can guarantee that these particular devices are going to be in there. Let's see. Yeah, it's still not populated yet. Okay. Uh, oh yeah. And that's yeah, it probably would take a bit more time for that to come through too because uh, it's still being processed, so they're, they're checking. Yeah, so it's all assigned, everything, and they're just, it's being checked, basically. Yeah. If, if we were to make it a mandatory one, as soon as it becomes available, it would install. Right, cool. Till next time, that should keep you going for a bit. Um, There's a lot to go over in that, but I had to get it out of the way. <laughs>